We got one. The Miami Hurricanes get a verbal commit from a class of 2024 quarterback from a six foot six skyscraper, Judd Anderson. Welcome to the U. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How about that for a Friday night? Coming off an unofficial visit to the U, which must have been a really good one for Georgia-based quarterback Judd Anderson from Jones County High School. He is, you know, it's technically the second verbal commit to Miami in this cycle, but the first one was a kicker. A really good kicker in Abram Murray, but you get your first actual field player to build around. Judd Anderson is going to be a Miami Hurricane to help me break this down. Uh, it's been a minute we've been able to talk about a commitment, John. Uh, I actually, it makes me kind of feel bad we didn't do a dedicated episode for Abram Murray, which happened, you know, several months ago. Right. But here we are now for Judd Anderson. John, I obviously love his size and I love his physical tools. People have pointed out to me he didn't put up great stats as a junior in high school. How much of a project do you think Judd Anderson is? Look, I think that's part of the conversation. But when you look at the quarterback room at the U, I, I do think that there is some flexibility to add this type of quarterback here going forward in the post Tyler Van Dyke era. No, no matter how it looks, no matter how many names are going to be in that race uh, for Shannon Dawson and company, you need some variants and different types of quarterbacks. We've seen similar with, with Ja'Curry Brown last year, a guy who – you know, it creates excitement and you're just like, man, if he takes the next couple steps, we'll see. You know, I think there's a lot of similarities between these two uh, passers, not only as as big, uh, big and big armed quarterbacks, but decently athletic players. I think, you know, Brown is a, a different style of runner than Anderson, but that stride, that length enables him to churn up some yardage when he needs to. But there's no doubt from a mechanical, technical standpoint, um, there's going to be a lot uh, ahead for Judd Anderson. But look, he still has his senior season there uh, in Jones County. So I do think you're going to see a natural progression. He's wanted to make this commitment for some time. So I do think sort of emotionally, mentally, with this off the table, he could refocus and retool. And, and I also think it's worth bringing up, Alex, that – this is a legitimate two-sport guy. I mean, this is not a throwaway basketball player. Hey, I'm just tall. Let me grab a couple rebounds. This is double-double for multiple years in a, in a state semifinalist type of, of roster on the hardwood. So as a quarterback in particular, you're always – ahead of the curve because you, you've got private coaches and you're spending all your time processing and digging into it. Not in this case with Judd Anderson. Right. He has very much split his time between football and basketball. So with the plan in college being all on the football side, I do think he's got the opportunity, especially with those physical tools you talk about, to take considerable steps in a shorter amount of time because it will be his sole focus really for the first time in his, in his athletic life. Let's talk more about those physical tools, John. I mentioned six foot six. He's in the the two ten plus uh, range. Obviously, coming off his junior season, he's going to add you know more size and muscle before he ever arrives at Miami. Um, you know, I've I've gone down several Judd Anderson film rabbit holes. Now, when you're watching things like the huddle reels and the YouTube highlights, you only see the good. Like they only show you the good, but the good looks really good. This guy's got a gun, uh, and you know. You can't teach size. That's God given. So he's got that with his six foot six frame. You know, most of the other quarterbacks in the class don't have that. He's also blessed with an extremely strong arm, and it looks like an accurate arm as well on deep throws. So, I mean, do you have anything to add on on the good that Anderson brings to the table? Yeah, there's no doubt, Donna. When, when he's in the pocket and his feet are set and he fires that thing, he could spray it anywhere, all three levels. And, and I think more impressively, he can spot you outside the numbers if you need to. So if you think of the higher level Saturday throws into Sunday throws, that's where the timing really has to align. You know, can you hit the back of the receiver's shoulder right there with the defender in his face along the sidelines, even if you're not on that side of the field? And that's the type of arm talent that Anderson's going to bring. And I think the sneaky athleticism 
is a big part of it too. Again, we know this is going to be a more wide open air raid based offense, which means you've got to do a lot on the move when that initial timing isn't there, uh, which, which look, it's football, right? It's going to happen every so often. And I think that's where Anderson really, from a physical standpoint, has a heck of an advantage. I think you could pull over some of those basketball traits, whether it's just body awareness, body control, balance, all those things we see comfortable for Anderson, meaning he can throw that thing on the move. He can redirect. He can go against the grain and roll to his left and still square up with some power. So if, if he can condense the motion and tighten up a little bit more mechanically, he becomes a, a true weapon inside the pocket or out. And obviously when you talk about the modern game, that becomes closer to ideal status. So this is a quarterback recruit that, as time goes forward, I think more Miami fans certainly are, are going to fall in love a little bit. But I do also think other schools are, are going to kind of be mad that they missed out. And that's what Shannon Dawson told Anderson. Hey, let me offer you and prioritize you before the rest of the country does. So the timing of this commitment is very important for Miami because, look, we know quarterback recruiting is up and down. You know, this is the first commitment since Jaden Rashada at the position, right? Ooh, so yeah. that that matters <laughs> from a timing and really a political standpoint. So I do think this relationship between Anderson and Dawson is, is going to apex, and I think with time, this is going to look better and better, almost like we talked about all last cycle with Emory Williams. Three-star class of 2024 quarterback Judd Anderson has verbally committed to the University of Miami. Uh, John, um, I think we're both of the opinion that Miami wants to take two quarterbacks in this class, but how, how does this uh, Anderson commitment, how does it affect the rest of the field? Like, do, does, this, does this mean Miami's definitely out of it for Aaron Noland? How, how could this affect someone like Air, A.J. Hairston, who we really like, who I know is interested in Miami and has been offered? Well, what, what do you think happens from here? Yeah, this creates urgency. There, there's no doubt. But we also see a lot of dominoes falling this time of year. Nolan's scheduled to come off the board on Saturday. Ohio State is is the favorite there. Michael Van Buren's taking visits elsewhere. Um, Harrison will see. You know, Luke Moga was at Oregon. So there's a lot of other options for Miami. But now securing that first quarterback creates a little bit of relief in Shannon Dawson's mind, I'm sure. Uh, and it creates some urgency with some of those other quarterbacks that probably need to circle back around and check on, on where they stand with the U. Because in theory, if Anderson is more of a long-term type of deal, then on the other side of it, if you want to bring in a second quarterback, you need to bring in somebody who can help out sooner rather than later, right? So I'm not sure which of those names is closer to that outside of Noland and Van Buren. So I think it's going to be fascinating from, from both angles, these other quarterback recruits and Miami's standpoint, because you, you took a big physical we'll see type of player. So you usually want to counter that with somebody who's a little bit more polished and experienced coming in, in the same class, but we'll see how this thing goes. But I think either way, as you mentioned, two quarterbacks has to be the plan for Miami and taking Anderson before Nolan and Van Buren and some of these other players, Moga, come off the board, I do think kind of reaffirms that, at least in our opinion. Great stuff as always here from John Garcia Jr. Make sure you follow him. He's our Locked On Network recruiting expert at John Garcia underscore junior on Twitter. Guys, thank you so much for supporting Locked On Canes. Make sure to smash that like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to this on the audio version, make sure you, make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcasts. Got a new cane. Got a new cane. Judd Anderson is a Miami Hurricane. We'll talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked On Canes, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.